We're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Madi. And on today's episode of The Spicy Life, we are doing how to recognize when it's time for transformation. And to join me in this spicy conversation, I have Theo Cummings. He is a spiritual entrepreneurship coach, rapid transformational hypnotherapist, speaker, and relationship expert, and founder of Charisma Energy Mastery. He was personally trained and mentored by the world's number one hypnotherapist, Marissa Peer, in the internationally acclaimed, award-winning, standalone hybrid method, rapid transformational therapy, or RTT. Theo founded his coaching company five years ago that provides customized programs that have helped hundreds of women leave their unfulfilling nine to five jobs to manifest true abundance as he coins it by building a six figure coaching consulting online expert business within weeks using their unique message as a personal brand. The crowd goes wild for Theo. Theo, welcome to the spicy life. Thank so, you so much, Mari. Yes, your bio Thanks amazing. for having me. So super excited to uh, have connected with you and your energy. I'm excited to join uh, in this uh, conversation about transformation with you. But first, mm. I have to warm you up because you were in the G spot, which is guest spotlight. Don't be scared. Uh, with something that will <laughs> hope in, will you know open you up just a little bit. And so, our my first spicy question to you is: Tell us when you first fell in love with yourself. Mm. Oh my gosh. When I woke up this morning. Ooh. <laughs> well, actually, so when I first fell in love with myself, it really happened <clears throat> the moment I actually reached out for uh, support when it came to my mental health, actually. And so it all started from when I was uh, a youngster, you know, growing up playing music, drums, piano, guitar, you name it. This is actually the kind of the role that I decided to pick up. This is one of the best ways for me to connect with my parents and, and to get love and validation from them being a sibling of four. Mm. So I know this is in hindsight from my studies and research, this is actually what most of us do in childhood is we kind of just choose a role that's not taken right yeah. and so my role was kind of the rebel you know my older sister she was the achiever my younger sister was the princess and then my little brother was kind of like the prince right so it's kind of interesting how that happened but long story short I ended up playing music a lot went to college got into uh, an amazing college went to Berkeley College of Music went to study more of psychology and uh, business and music and then I got into partying a lot, actually, in New Orleans. This is where I went to undergrad. I went to school with this guy. His name is g Easy. Maybe some of you ladies will know who he is. <laughs> Very well-known rapper. And we were working together. And uh, I actually fell into an addictions with, you know, cocaine and you know, smoking, drinking, et cetera, et cetera. And this was the life of the music industry. This is how you got to vibe out, say, so connect, mm -hmm. right? This is how you make connections in, in the music industry, unfortunately. But... You know, this was my quote unquote passion. This was my purpose or as I thought it was. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so I had to leave the music industry. I had to go home. I had to recover. And this was a lot of shame, a lot of guilt and didn't feel good about myself. Mm -hmm. But I did recover. And even though I had kind of gotten out of the game, so to speak, for a while, I got back in and my career really took off. It really did because I just felt so rejuvenated, felt so proud of myself for having or overcome this without going, ha having to go to rehab. And so the more successful I got, it's almost like I had this unconscious deep desire for my parents to love me more mm -hmm. and give me more validation. But you know what? They didn't really give me more love that I, I wanted to, right? And so... I actually even found myself becoming more and more and more unfulfilled in my position and in my purpose that I thought it was my purpose. And this was confusing, felt super lost. And I felt like the way that I was making money was, it just didn't feel as authentic as when I was just making music just for the love of it, right? Yeah. Just for the passion of, of the playing itself. And so I went to depression and I got into addictions and uh, anxiety again. So, you know, we think we hit rock bottom, some yeah. of us, right? 
we hit it again. We're like, oh, I didn't know there was going to be another one. Damn. <laughs> more? I was like, yeah, that's okay. So that didn't, didn't see that one coming. And so, you know, I, that was the first moment that I really had no other choice after many misdiagnoses from the doctors trying to figure out why I was so fatigued all the time. Couldn't get out of bed, exhausted, distraught, right? And so I got, I became a client of RTT or rapid transformational therapy, which is one of the tools that I use now with my private and corporate clients. But the transformation was just completely mind blowing to say the least. And it was all work that I had done not ever experienced before. I had gone the whole gambit for the last 10 years of a lot, what I like to call self-development light or mm -hmm. self-development beginners, which is, you know, books, uh, spirituality, uh, meditation yep. and therapy, talk therapy, right? Like regular hypnosis. I tried going to see Tony Robbins, live gurus, <laughs> you tried right? everything. I did that. I did the group coaching, right? And that all, I'm not saying none of that helped me, but I am saying that I still found myself stuck mm -hmm. and it was really confusing because I developed this kind of limiting belief like, Oh, well this stuff all works for everybody else, but it just doesn't work for me. I'm, I'm just yeah. unique. Right. <laughs> and then we're just like, we call, come fall into this victim paradigm where we're just like, well, I, there's something wrong with me, right? And I just couldn't open up as a guy. We're conditioned to be very suppressing of our emotions, especially. And this can also happen to women too, mm -hmm. especially, you know, women Absolutely. who have been through childhoods where they had to grow up too soon and they had to become some way, shape or form like an alpha, so to speak, right? Yeah. And so this is where a lot of, Guilty. I had a lot of trust <laughs> issues. Yeah, I had a lot of trust <laughs> issues, right? But I had to, there's no other, there's not, no other, option. <laughs> so I didn't even have the money. So I put on a credit card and I said, you know, my mentor in RTT, she said, you know, are, Theo, are you interested in changing your life and doing the, the deep work? Mm -hmm. Right. Or are you committed? And I said, well, I'm committed. I mean, I'm paying you with my credit card that I don't even have money on. So I am committed. So I paid her. And the next night I had so much anxiety. I'm like, what did I just do? Right. Right. What did I just do? I don't even know what I'm doing right now. And I called her up. I was like, I think I made a mistake. And she was like, see, there you go again. You're not committed. You're actually interested because interested just means you're going to let your fears and insecurities mm -hmm. and your excuses really get in the way. But committed means, you know, this is a proven process for the subconscious. And so committed says you're not going to let anything stand in your way of getting the results that you want in your life and finding your true purpose. And in that moment, I just let go, mm. right? That's actually what all healing modalities is helping people yeah. to let go, right? In trust again, open your heart again. And I always like to say, if you dated for, you know, two years and nothing good happened, would you just give up on love? Would you ever give up on yourself? And the answer is no. So, I trusted the process and I invested into myself and she totally transformed me in, in a matter of weeks. And I was so blown away. And in that moment, when I fully felt that release, and I always say like when we cry <clears throat> and assuming we're not resisting the crying, mm -hmm. we're crying out our old story of who we thought we were. Yeah. But it's really the beliefs that were conditioned into us that don't even belong to us. For example, if mm -hmm. you're afraid of something, right? The baby, you look at a baby, sh the baby girl, she sees a spider. She's going to pet the spider, right? She's a nice spider, right? And then mom comes in the front door. She's like, oh my God, right? right. She's freaking out. And the next time the baby sees the spider, it starts crying. Yeah. So all, we're not born afraid. We're not born not lovable. We're not born not good enough, which is, are the three root causes that prevent people from taking action on what they really want to do. So... I had to go through this process and this is why this is actually, it's so, so interesting when you do this subconscious work, I, I realized that all the dots on a subconscious level connected me to where I am today. All these things in a spiritual way I had to experience for me to come into my empowerment, meaning like narcissistic parents. 
I truly believe narcissistic people takers have to come into your life for you to actually have that adversity mm -hmm. to become the most empowered version of yourself. I truly believe that even though you may not have caused the pain in your life, in some way, shape or form, you did spiritually attract that. Now that's not good nor bad, but that gives you the power back in your hands because then you say, wow, I, I need to change my environment. I need to change my mindset. I need to change my, the way I've been living my life so unconsciously. How did and you, I think this is... Sorry, yeah. Theo, let me interrupt you. How did you... What light bulb went off, though, that said, it's now or never. I need to ah. make this transformation. Well, from the paradigm that I was in, I was still being driven by needing validation from the people in my life from my childhood, from my parents, my family, every decision I made was based on their perceptions. Mm. And I always say the only thing stopping people from success in business is, which is what I do now. And the reason why I do this now is it's so fascinating because all the women who I used to coach in relationships, they were not getting quality men in their life that were yeah. a natural fit because they were resonating at a vibration on a day-to-day -day basis at a low emotionally drained basis just because yeah. they were not in a spiritually aligned career. So getting them out of depression, getting them out of anxiety, getting them out of these relationship issues had to do with get pivoting into a job because we do spend a, a, a majority, majority of our life working. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so getting them into a, a consciousness, a state of consciousness where they're at a higher level of love, peace, joy, and they can attract someone without trying to just chase success, trying to chase manifestations yeah. when you're not solving the right problems. So to answer your question, when it comes to like the, the whole aspect of like business, I, I needed to realize that all my, the only thing stopping me were number one, my fear of the, my, ego's management of the perceptions of yep. others and the ego doesn't want to be right because if we're doing if our, we're behaving in such a way we're living our life a certain way and then someone else comes along and they say well you're doing it wrong our egos are like um Ooh, a sting. no oh, because we've yeah. lived our whole lives right yeah. it's a it's a shattering of identity and these are a lot of my clients who have been through these abusive relationships or just which are actually just a reflection of the lack of love that they're not giving to themselves, mm -hmm. right? As you and I both know. Absolutely. And so, and so that was just a symptom, right? And so the other thing besides fear of judgment, ridicule, humiliation, and, and rejection, right? The only other thing that was stopping me from coming into my full purpose, what's the, what was life trying to come through me? This is something that everyone is now faced with mm -hmm. who's not in their true purpose from the pandemic. Let's yeah. not ignore what's going on in the world right now, right? There's pressure being put on it. But this is the good news is that there's an opportunity oh my God. for people Absolutely. to say, oh, well, maybe I need to stop asking what's the meaning of life. And maybe I get to create that meaning for life. Maybe oh God, that's, maybe this. life is trying to find the way. It's how it's trying to express itself through my own decision, my own creation. And <laughs> I, I tell people, don't try to win the game of life because life goes on forever. Right. Energy is transcendent, right? You can't create it or destroy it. So I say, how about you just master the human game? And that's when I came to realize I need to let go of the perceptions of others yeah. and I need to recreate a healthy relationship to money and, re and, and, and people because people oftentimes they have a scarcity relationship with money because our parents grew up in the Great Depression or at least oh our God, grandparents yeah. did, right? So those beliefs help them to survive, but those con subconscious conditionings, it's called subconscious because it's underneath their consciousness. But these ways of behaving and treating uh, money and, and thinking money is, is like real. It is real. I'm not saying money is not important. <laughs> and I'm not saying, I'm not it's denying like that we need money to survive, right? <laughs> Unless you're going to go in the Himalayas and live out there. But, and I did actually, I, I did go out there and it was incredible. But the, um, the whole illusion of money is fascinating because money, people think they own money. And that's why they're so afraid to spend it. Mm -hmm. But in reality, it's kind of like if you were to go to the beach, right? And you're like, oh, wow, now I think I need to own some of this money or some of this sand, right? 
And so you get, you pour the sand into your backpack and you're pouring it all the way to the top. Now you have this hundred pound backpack that you're trying to lug around and protect the, the sand. You're like, this is my sand. And then I, someone like <laughs> me comes along or even you, Mari, and, and you're, we're just like, Hey, you know, you, you can just enjoy the abundance that's available to you. All of the sand. And you're like, what? I'm like, yeah, it doesn't belong to you. Like, you have access to all the money in the world. You have access to my bank account. You have access to Mari's bank account. And everyone else has access to your bank account because one day your bank account is going to have someone else's money in it. Yeah. So it's just the belief that we own it. It's like if I were to deposit a million dollars into one of your listeners' bank accounts, if I were to just tell them that, be like, hey, I just deposited a million dollars in your bank account. You'd be like, oh, wow. Oh my God, thank you. And it's like, no, actually, I was just kidding. I didn't. You'd be like, oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So it's, it's literally, this is what I do with my clients, actually, is we do this thing that's called future pacing or mm-hmm. it's called um, nevelizing, where we actually have, you, after we remove your subconscious, we vacuum out your subconscious conditioning, we, um, we have a conversation where we're talking. I'm asking my client, to, like, if you were my client, right, I'd ask you to talk to me like we're talking like next year and you've achieved future. all your goals but mm-hmm. last year and we're having this conversation self. yes yes as it as if it already has happened and so what you're doing is you're training your nervous system you're retraining it to feel what that would feel like yep. because the only thing that was different from when i tricked you on the phone telling you i deposited money in your bank account was just the belief Yep. that cause you to feel good inside. So people, people are conditioned by society to not give themselves permission to feel good before they get the thing or the yeah. relationship. And that's what keeps them in a state of scarcity. Because at the root of everything is your belief system though, because it dictates how you will mm. behave, how you will feel and your thought process. And so for, for my listeners who may still be somewhat unfamiliar or um, tuning in for the first time about consciousness work, your conscious memories or thought process is everything inside of your awareness. That's about like 10%. Your subconscious memories and your thought process is about 40%. That's uh, recent memories that you take for recollection. Then there's 50% unconscious memories, and this is repressed outside of your awareness. You have no clue, no idea. And then there's cellular memories, which is dealing with your stored cells and energetic pattern. So when he talks about family trauma or the Great Depression, what Theo's referring to is some of that inter- intergenerational that's been, you know, come through your genetic pool that you may not even know where scarcity is coming from. But your great grandmother experienced it, and she energetically um, uh, imprinted your mother, who energetically imprinted you, um, and it happens on the father's side as well. And so now there's a thought process going on, and you are unaware or aware. But either way, it's coming oftentimes from your genetics and your family experience. So I just want to give them a little bit of background on that, just because they. This is a, when it comes to consciousness, I feel like um, it's something that people are still grasping, right? Uh, They aren't as familiar as like coaches like you and I that speak this Mm. all the time. And so I want them to have like immediate reference when it comes to using that word and that they, you know, use it appropriately too. And also know when someone who they're talking to is operating from a higher level of consciousness or low level or even lacking awareness. Um, but continue because I'm, I'm loving what I'm hearing about the exercises that you're doing. It makes people afraid, though, to feel something that they feel undeserving of. People have programmed mm. themselves to feel like unless they worked for that million dollars deal that you put in their account, they don't deserve it. And so part of the there's a population that will not believe that trans, you know, that trans, that transfer. There's another population that will be like, well, yeah, I welcome it. Easy money. Let's get it. It's like two yeah, different types of people. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, there's three keys to unlocking the, your deeper understanding of the mind. And people assume that the mind is just so complex that they kind of just throw their hands up in the air and they're just like, like oh, it's so I tap out. Right? <laughs> but if you just know these three basic things, then you can really deeply understand like, what's really going on here 
So number one, the mind learns through repetition. This is the most practical aspect that I'm sure everybody mm -hmm. pretty much is aware of. Number two is the mind loves what's familiar and runs away from what's not familiar. Mm -hmm. Number three is the mind learns most powerfully through images because images stimulate emotions. Yep. Now, when it comes to the subconscious conditioning and the programming that was conditioned into people from ages zero to seven, which is where the root causes are, this is what your subconscious is familiar with. So, in, for example, when someone wins, wins the lottery and they were previously broke, they're, they're going to throw it away because it's not because they're stupid. It's because their subconscious conditioning is pulling them back to what's not familiar because their subconscious is, is actually triggering their nervous system to say, well, we need to keep Theo or Mari safe. Mm -hmm. And the way we think safety is, is familiarity. Yeah. So if whatever you're familiar with, that's what your subconscious mind will pull you back into. And unfortunately, like you can't do this type of work um, on yourself because there's just so many ways that we delude ourselves consciously, yeah. not just to mention consciously, but subconsciously, there's so many experiences that we often don't, we, it's not that we don't remember these difficult times in our childhood, but we don't know how to transform the interpretations the right way. Right. And so that's why people like you, like me, um, people who are experts in these, this deeper work can actually help others to truly have a, to truly create that facilitation. And, and I've seen a lot of people, they try to do it on themselves and it, it can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Um, so I highly encourage anyone to just like really just tr start trust because it all has to do with trust, right? If I say, what I always tell people is like, if you want to trust anybody, you have to remind yourself that no matter what happens in any relationship, that at the end of the day, you're going to be okay. Yeah. Right? <laughs> But it's this belief like this person w could damage my, they could destroy my life that keeps people stuck, you know? Oh, for sure. And you have to be trust if you want trust. So you're only going to block it if you don't operate from a place of trust mm -hmm. then to ask trust to come and walk in, right? If we, we're not going to, I'm not going to digress right now into law of attraction, but when it comes to trust, it's, it's very fragile. And I think that you probably see much like I do. A lot of people who come in with trust uh, issues and are fearful of being vulnerable, of actually like even acknowledging some of the things that they experience. And it sounds like what you touched on right now is some of the mis you know conceptions that people have about transformational work. They think that if they read the books and if they um, have gone to some of like the courses or seminars, um, that now they're transformed. And they are ready yeah. to go tackle a relationship and make money tomorrow. They're like, every single person that uh, schedules a consultation with me, which I'm sure with you as well, it is the, I've done so much work on myself. I am ready. I've done so much work. And then I ask them, well, define what that work looks like, right? What work have you done? And they're like, well, I was on this, you know, spiritual group on Facebook where we had to, you know, pray for each other every day. And I'm like, okay, okay. Like I'm just listening to you know, they're, they're on these threads or, you know, it, it, it's, interesting the perception that people have about the work that they've put in and so i like right now that you're addressing some of those misconceptions that you need an accountability partner to actually help you through that process that it is real work and we not only hold you account accountable but we hold up a mirror to some of the things that you didn't even know existed mm, that's so important to know thank you so much for mentioning that and the first thing i'll say is that you know, I'll, I'll tell you a little story. So one of my clients, Jessica, she was really actually successful. So, you know, she, she had always been a high performer through her whole life. She was always like the most well-achieved child in her family. And she was aware of the fact that she, she, was, she knew what the value of investing into yourself was. Whereas most of society, right, they're, they're so stuck in scarcity that- yep. They their parents have conditioned them to do anything not to spend money. Oh, do yeah. anything to not spend money, right? And I I always say like I wish my younger self knew that like what you pay for is what you get. 
So <laughs> if you're gonna if you're gonna get some free stuff, right? That's great. It's gonna open your mind, but it's not gonna give you a solution because most most of the free stuff is all mark. Like if you have a deeper understanding of how sales and marketing work, the free stuff is all problems focused, mm -hmm. right? So that's not gonna get people a real permanent transformation. And so, anyways, Jessica, she had done the whole thing like me, like self development, all this stuff business coaches, life coaches, all this stuff, but still found herself uh, stuck. So again, she said, well, I've tried all this stuff. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but she was still in this job that she wasn't authentically making money with, right? Because even if people do get financial abundance, she was there. She had everything that everyone said, oh, I'll be happy when I get that. <laughs> And then she was like, well, clearly this isn't the answer, mm -hmm. right? That's why we see millionaires, celebrities going to Buddhist monks for fulfillment. We never see a Buddhist monk go to a celebrity on how to be successful. <laughs> right? so, so true, so true. So she was like, okay, Theo, your spiritual business coach, like, I'd love to know more. And, you know, I said, if I, if I aim to be honest with you, I know you're afraid right now because you don't know if this is just your problem, but you were subconsciously trained to put – to." Pr create, make money to get love for mom and dad. Yep. Just that, right? You were subconsciously conditioned as a little girl to also put the needs of others ahead of yours and think that you have value because of that. Mm -hmm. Think that you have self-worth because of that. And I'm saying right now, it's not your fault, right? But it is your responsibility to see that quantum physics is telling us the truth. Yeah. And quantum physics says the past is not not real. The future is not real. That's quantitative time. If you actually, you can actually Wikipedia the word Kairos, K-A-I-R-O-S. And it goes on to explain the his history behind quantitative time versus qualitative time. Yeah. So basically what this is showing, just to make it very understandable, is that the past is recreating itself mm -hmm. because our brains are just patterns of thoughts. That's what right. a belief is actually, Right. And the future reality is actually that you want, that everyone wants, is actually energy. So it's actually already been done. It's mm -hmm. already existing now. The future you is already to be done. Now people get tripped up on the fact that they have to become the person that deserves the Lambo, right? Mm -hmm. That deserves the loving relationship. They have to become that. And that's humbling, right? Because that means you have to get out of your own way. Yeah, right? that's the scariest part. And you have to realize though. that... Yeah, it's That's so the scary to say. Well, part for people, they don't want to be yeah. uncomfortable, and we're living in a time where people feel entitled to comfort. They feel entitled yeah, and was, to everything. <laughs> yeah, and and I told I was like Jessica, like, do you see that you're the only constant in your life? Mm -hmm. Right? She's like, damn, you're right. It's like, you know, this is not about changing who you are, but it is about vacuuming out those beliefs because yeah. your life is going to be whatever you create it to be because no one's going to force you to do anything. But this is why you've attracted experiences yep. and people that justify your subconscious conditioning yep. that says you're worthy of. She's replaying the so, patterns. Yeah. So it, it, you're, you're basically just attracting energy that's feeding into your own self image. Did right? Jessica like, love what she it, did for a living? No, she didn't like it. She was in a so very male-dominated industry. So she wasn't walking in her purpose. And, and She wasn't. It sounds like that's what you hone in on is that – because it requires you energetically to overcompensate. It requires you to be drained, like you said at the end of the day, when like you're unhappy and displeased. Um, mm. she, and, and what I do is help purpose mates meet. It sounds like what you focus on is helping them – reach their purpose. Um, mm -hmm. when they're feeling, you know, energetically drained, when they don't have anything to give to someone else because it's all been depleted. It sounds like it's helping, you know, with the reprogramming of beliefs so that they can find themselves and be more clear about some of the things that they're doing are for other people's approval. Yeah. Other I, people's I, acceptance. It, yes, exactly. So Here's the thing. It's, it's truly my belief that it's not about removing beliefs and replacing those old beliefs with mm -hmm. your purpose. Of course, you've got to replace them with positive beliefs. But 
you, it's not about re replacing those old beliefs with your true purpose because you already have a divine calling yep. and your job is to discover Yes. what that is yes. and i'm still doing it right just because i'm a transformational speaker and a coach a business coach doesn't mean i'm going to be that forever it's the same thing it's we're doing the work on ourselves guys everyone listening out there like we're <laughs> doing the stuff progress. we preach we are walking the talk we are removing the trauma like we are constantly doing our own work investing into our own selves this is what all the greatest people did. I see so many coaches, especially, they're not practicing what they preach. And they're just helping solve other people's problems because that's yeah. what they've been trained to do. But Wayne Dyer, when a, he actually one day, when he, at the end of his career, he, he gave all his assistant all of his belongings. And he said, go sell all of this stuff. I'm, and then he went to go out, live out in the woods just because that's what he felt was his heart's calling mm -hmm. at that point because <laughs> he was doing so much deep work, right? Yeah. And so it's incredible because she actually transitioned into extroverting her skill set that she had learned through years of being, you know, partner at PwC, which is like billions of dollars um, value. And she, I helped her to start her own business, and I taught her how to market it and sell herself. Now this is where people get tripped up on. It's like I don't. They're like I don't know. I don't feel comfortable putting myself on camera or marketing myself and, and yeah. selling my services. And it's like, well, that's just, you need those skills to get rid of the self-doubt that you can be a successful entrepreneur. And, you know, society doesn't want people to be entrepreneurs because it's just not in the best interest of leaders to have no followers because mm -hmm. without leaders, without followers, there can't be leaders. But at the same time, your parents, right? Everyone's parents, they're not going to say, hey, you should go out and be an entrepreneur. Unless your parents are entrepreneurs, but generally <laughs> rarely, speaking, rarely. I feel like we're generally speaking, they just want you to be safe. Yeah, they just want you to be secure. So they want you to say, "Hey, have the have the safe plan, right? Go live. This is how your life should be lived, and this is what pains me about society. Yeah. <laughs> this is why I think we have so many wars, is because there's just too many people who are like these sheep who are given the script of how they should be living their life and what they should be believing. We're breaking out of the matrix, it sounds like. <laughs> it is. It's the it blue is. pill. It the is. blue pill is like, okay, be it's comfortable, mm -hmm. right? Like seek authority to give you certainty, like the yep. media, like the government, like, um, you know, fashion magazines. Like, But the red pill is what Neo takes. And he's like, well, this is the pill of choosing myself, Yeah. right? This is the pill with this choosing discomfort. This is the pill of, yeah, it's the pill of walking into the fire and peeling away your conditioning. This is like a, this is the same thing that I had to take a stand against, which is my own conditioning, which was sabotaging myself, self-sabotaging myself. Talk to me about what you notice the most when it comes to um, people who come in with limiting beliefs or with, let's not even talk about limiting beliefs. Let's talk about sure. branding. Your ability to help them figure out where they should be focusing their skill set when it comes to walking in their purpose and being more mm -hmm. intentional with that. How are you noticing? Because I want to relate it back to love, right? I want to make this connection. How are you noticed that, right. noticing that they are branding themselves? Because I feel like you have a relationship brand as well. How, do you, how are you seeing them brand themselves in this old school traditional job that they may be doing or this job that's not serving them versus how they brand themselves when they're walking in their purpose. What's the difference in those two images and those two perceptions that they're feeding the world? Oh, that's such an incredible question. Incredible question. So let's look at the root cause. So the root, the reason why people, there's two reasons why people don't have a clarity of their personal brand. Mm -hmm. The first problem is the same problem that most of society hasn't even looked at, which is like, we just get so caught up in the day-to-day -day grind, the overwhelm of our busy lives, and we just don't take the time to sit down and say, what does success look like mm -hmm. in my relationships? What does that look like in my life, right? Yeah. What do I believe? Not what I think my parents or friends right. think I should believe. <laughs> what, what do I, I actually believe? stand for? What am I willing to die for, right? 
And what, I, what types of people do I want to spend my time with? What people do I have nothing to do with, right? Um, we, we just assume that because Johnny grew up down the street from us when we were nine years old, that's <laughs> yeah. the reason why we should be best friends with him. Right. No, it's just he just happens to be some little kid that grew up on the street. You didn't consciously choose him as a friend. Right. right? So that's the first thing. It's like people don't sit down to decide what that is. Now, here's the thing with people with dysfunctional families, which is most of, pretty much all my clients. And I, I truly believe if you had a functional family, you're abnormal. <laughs> right, like, like snaps to that. Snaps like, to that. I'm just, I'm just so being true. real, guys. I'm just being vulnerable, it, authentic. It's not right? normal to so, have a normal family, correct? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's and, and all trauma. Really, trauma is just it's an experience that is just too great for you to integrate into your psyche at the time it it was created in your life. And this is the baggage that people call baggage. Yeah. But this, you know, conditional love from mom and dad, emotional abuse, um just kind of like bullying, right? From school. Like these traumas, like they distort our own self image and, our, and they create our limiting beliefs in this fear of, of judgment. And so this is why it's so difficult for people to, to even know, mm-hmm. you know, like what they really truly stand for. Yeah. And this is why many of these types of people, I, I don't say these types like I'm judging anybody, but I'm, I am saying like, people who have had a lot of uh, issues and misunderstandings, feelings of isolation, feelings like overgiving to prove their value, right? Stuff like that. They, they have a hard time at finding their true purpose. Mm-hmm. So that, those are the two reasons why people have a hard time at doing that. And it's so beautiful where there's so many, there's so many resources out there that can help you. But really when it comes to like the experts, like these people are here to make you have the results of much more income, yeah, much higher quality relationships. And the, what, what people are paying people like you and I for like all the top experts in this self-development field is they're not paying us for our time. Right? <laughs> they're, paying us, they're paying us for, access to our minds right. of what we know of the years and years and years of studying with other experts like the people that we've learned from yep. and the the coolest thing about all this stuff is this is the same information that all my clients are using to to grow their businesses the same mindset work that i give them and i say well if you want to be a coach you got to do the work on yourself right. first right. right so that you can have a deep belief in yourself because when you go into a sales engagement with your potential clients, they're not buying your process. They're buying their own dreams and they're buying your confidence. How are you? And that's priceless. It is. It absolutely is. How are you helping them stay level-headed when someone comes in, they decide that they're going to pursue a different walk in life and they want to be a coach. Now mm-hmm. they have all these tools and resources to be a coach. Mm-hmm. How do you help them stay in the check uh, and check their balances of, but you don't know everything, there's still more work to be done, right? Because people feel like, well, once I've been through this program or I've been through this training, like I'm ready to go, let's go. Versus no, Mm -hmm. it's a constant evolving, it's a constant growth process. What are you doing to remind them that the work hasn't been completely done yet? Well, yeah, there's... there's, um there's actually a concept it's it's called fixed mindset versus growth mindset and the whole it's 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 actually the whole thing is is about how we're conditioned by society to think that completion exists Mm -hmm. right like oh you know get this beautiful fake boobs and then you know your life is complete right (laughs) like you've reached (laughs) your potential right and people buy that stuff and here's the thing Yeah, here's the thing. Here is the thing, my friend. So people really truly believe that if they press the buy now button on some kind of program, right, that's not tailored to them, that the program's just going to jump out of the screen and do all the work for them. And this is why people give up on self-development. This is why people give up on their own businesses. They give up on workouts. They're like, I bought the machine. 
They're like, oh, I just got to pay someone to make a funnel for me. Or I got to pay someone to do Facebook ads for me. I got to pay someone to make a website for me. And I'm like, no, you got to learn communication skills, my friend. Yeah. Organically making sales, like reaching out to real humans. Because the new model of business is not about fear and manipulation. It's about right. connection and love. Yeah. Right? It's authenticity. People want vulnerability, authenticity. So you, that's all you got to do. You got to just be true to yourself and you got to be willing to say no to clients who are not a 10 out of 10 vibrationally for you. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, they're just going to bring you down, bring your emotions down. And, you know, this is, I've let clients go because of this, because mm. they've just, it's just this so, it makes me feel so heavy. So I just refer them out to someone else because I'm, I want to maintain my own vibration and I want to work with people who have an optimistic growth who mindset. Are where high it's like, vibration, yeah. Yeah, it's like the fixed mindset is, is dangerous because in schooling, right? Like if you have a fixed mindset as a child and you're like, oh, I'm the smart kid. Well, that can be, make you very vulnerable because if you're the smart kid and you take the test and you fail it, then that means you're not smart. And then your self-esteem goes down. Right. It's so, your self-perception. Yeah. Yeah. It, when it's, something's it's not a, in alignment with that, you are destroyed and lost. As opposed yeah, yeah. to the constant like, oh, well, this is a growing lesson. This is a learning lesson for me. Yeah, the best way to, to conceptualize it is that like a fixed mindset is spoken. And it's like speaking with your mouth. And then a growth mindset is like walking with your feet. Right? Yeah. Like it's a journey you take. It's not like a, an end point that you reach. It's like it's, you're, a false growth mindset is like, oh, I'm always growing. But you're not actually taking action to do that. It's the you behavioral I mean? part. Yeah, it's the behavior. It's a journey. Yeah. What you're speaking to, I have to touch on because it's very relevant with what people experience in frustration with the romantic relationships. They enter into relationships having done all of this self work. And mm -hmm. what happens is self expansion, which is one of the most sexiest things about how we choose a mate, kicks in. Yeah. And totally. someone loves you for all of the growth and the work that you've done. Then you wind up being able to provide growth through made involvement and growth through made involvement mm. is I've learned this. I've done all this work. Now I get to pass it on to you. Now I get to give you these tools. I get to help, you know, you grow as a person and yes. then you get into the relationship. You've mastered it or at least you feel like you have and you stop growing. You stop doing the work. Mm. Now passionate love decreases because what they were initially attracted to and what they thought that you would expand of themselves and expand in their relationship right. has stopped. Now you become less sexy, right? They may be sexually attracted to you, but it's not real sexual uh, energy. Way less. Because there's less of you making them grow and less of you even growing on your own. And so it sounds like what you're saying is so relatable to that is because as long as you continue growing and actually the work of growing, like actually from a behavioral standpoint, not just like, I read a new book. Okay, well, did you apply those tools? Great. Yes. That's, you're the great. <laughs> but what did you apply? <laughs> and yes, it sounds like that's yes. what you're hitting on when it comes to growth mindset. Yeah, 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 yeah. So <laughs> I remember earlier on in my days, you know, like four years ago when I was first starting out on coaching people is I would always, I, as a new coach, we always want to show people how expert we are, right? Like how much do we know? Oh my God, I tell you everything. <laughs> and, and one of the biggest <laughs> lessons I learned on how to become an amazing coach is, is giving people just enough to implement and get feedback, right? I don't say that there's no failure. There's only feedback. Yep. There's no, there's no losses. It's wins or lessons, yep. right? So I needed to slow down because what I was doing was I was actually making them feel really stupid because I was You're overwhelming them with too, too much knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. And so I needed to give them like a few pieces to core pieces of where they were in their journey. This is why I say if there's anyone out there wanting to be a coach, you don't need to have a program ready. You just need to have skills because your client's needs are so unpredictable. Life is unpredictable and the market is always changing. Oh my so you're God, actually yeah. better off learning sales. And then once you, you just have to be a week ahead of your client to be able to give them great results. But this is what I found is like, we get so caught up in this 
perfectionist belief. Mm -hmm. And we think perfectionism is real. Like we think perfect perfection is real. And then that's why we procrastinate. Yeah. Yeah. It's never the right time. If you have an iron and you have it on this fire and it's hot, well, if you wait too long, well, then the, the iron's going to get cold and then it's going to be too brittle for you to mold when previously that, that moment of opportunity was there for you to strike. So that's what yeah. we're talking about when it comes to like that old saying, seize the day. It's yeah. so true because there's only a few moments in your life that you have these kinds of like defining moments. And this podcast could be that for one person, if it's for one person, we've done our job, Mari, right? If like, we would change one person's life with, with what? this podcast. Absolutely. But what about the person who says, it's too late for me. It's too late for me to find love. It's too late for me to change my career. It's too late for me um, to start a family. What about that person who has that limiting belief? What do you say to the person who says, I can't right now, I can't do it? Well, just, just know that it's not that you're not good enough. It's just that you haven't been exposed to the right skills. Mm -hmm. But again, you're stabbing yourself in the chest with a sword Yeah. by arguing for your limitations. But here's the thing. Your ego only knows what success is possible for you in love and money mm -hmm. and health based on your past experiences. So it has no, your ego doesn't have any clue of what's possible because it can't see past what you've experienced. Yeah. But that's, that's just your ego. You have, it's not that you kill the ego. No, you love the ego. But it's, it's trying to protect you. But at the same time, like people, they, it, it's actually, if you want to look at it on a different, a, a funnier level, is like, you know, there's, there's a lot of people out there who actually get this like secret satisfaction from like, quote unquote, taking advantage of other people's empathy. <laughs> it sounds Taking messed advantage up, of other people's right? what? I didn't hear the last word I wanted. Empathy. Oh, empathy. empathy. Yeah, it sounds messed up, but that's actually the, a form of, you know, that's an extreme form of covert narcissism mm -hmm. where you're using victimhood as a way to get attention. Yeah. Right? So a narcissist is somebody who's so afraid of looking at their own darkness that they have to project it onto others and criticize and judge other people because yeah. they can't do the deep work on themselves. Mm-hmm. So if that's someone, if, if that, and don't worry, I want everyone to know that everyone has narcissism, right? It's not like it's this evil thing. Not a disease. It's like, it's, it's, an, <laughs> it's a continuum. Yeah, it's a continuum. But in fact, in the DSM of psychology, there's people on the far end of the spectrum who were so um, mentally ill, it's a chemical imbalance in the mm -hmm. brain. So these people, they, they don't even know they're narcissistic, let alone admit it, right? Yeah. So, but, but it's about finding this ha healthy balance, meaning you have this healthy ego where you have boundaries where you say no, right? And then you have this codependent um, balance too, where it's, which is healthy, which is mm -hmm. like, well, you don't need anyone to be happy. Yeah. You can fill your own cup a lot, right? You can love yourself so deeply and you have a lot of empathy for other people. Yeah. And you're in, you, so when you're in this kind of d contracted state of being, we talk, talk about consciousness, right? Yep. Contracted is fear, anger, mm -hmm. despair, right? And, and this, this is where a lot of people, they, they, they become overachievers, but in the wrong misaligned areas, right? So as you're contracted and people like this, if you ask them, hey, how are you? They'd be like, I'm good. I used yes. to be the same way. I'd be like, I'm good. So they're just so stuck in their own heads. They can't. So when you communicate, however, conversely with some, and I say, oh, how are you, Mari? And you say, I'm good. How are you? Mm -hmm. So what you're sub communicating to me is like, well, I've got my stuff handled enough and I'm mentally like well enough that I can actually be concerned about you. Like that's yeah. basic empathy, right? right? Like you're communicating your own mental health or by just saying that. I may tell you my truth of like, well, let me tell you what's going on actually in my life since you asked and then now expect you to really share and put you in the hot seat. <laughs> Ooh, now there, there, there's a few unicorns like you, Mari, like not to, not, not to like make, get your head too big, but seriously, that, like if, if you can be vulnerable like that with someone, I mean, that just shows, that's just a, a huge compliment to 
the deep work that you've done on yourself is being like, hey, if you really want to know, yeah, <laughs> this happened. Right. Theo, <laughs> and this I is how I feel about it. <laughs> I love what you're doing and I love how much you care about your clients and how you're able to, um, you know, use your personal experiences for continuous growth and to help them grow. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's constant. It's, it, it's a continuous process. Speak to me about why, and studies do show, right? Cause you, um, you and I understand limiting beliefs. Studies do show though, cause now we're going to talk science that people actually really believe that it is easier to achieve financial success in their career and to be more successful when it comes to the abundance mindset and how it works in their professional life, but not in their personal life. They think that love is harder to achieve than actual money is. Why do you think they give money more power in prosperity than they do the ability to attract love? Yes. Yeah, so, you know, I had, I had a friend uh, of mine who's actually one of my business partners and he went something through something similar where he was having, he always attracted these women who were, let's just say they were just too alpha, right? Like they wouldn't, they didn't let go mm -hmm. of their alpha because these women felt like they needed to prove how independent they were. Yeah. Like if he offered them his coat, they'd be like, no, I'm good. If he tried to help them with their Ooh. car, they'd be like, what, how dare you? I can just go to the, get it solved. And so he felt like it, here's the thing for like the women out there just as a piece of advice is like, yeah, it's great that you're independent, but there's a higher level where you can not prove anything. Yeah. And you can let go and play that feminine vulnerable role the feminine energy, and not mm -hmm. feel like your worth is on the line. Right. Like men don't think that you are so badass. They're actually insecure. Right? <laughs> because they, they feel well they just feel like they don't have They're any place to yeah. reason to be in your life because there's nothing they can do to serve you right so he was attracting these women and and the the biggest issue was that he he was trying to attract them through they were attracted to him for all the wrong reasons because of his success so i think that a lot of people think that like their outward appearance mm -hmm. or the praise they get on social media or their looks, you know, or their success, their money is what drives confidence, which we all know confidence is one of the sexiest things, right? Mm -hmm. So, so it, it, he was attracting her th through the, his financial means. And he realized that he was, it was a, such a shallow way to connect with somebody. And he never asked her what her values are up front. This is where a lot of people as well, I know for a fact, they get into these long-term relationships yeah. and they're like, oh, we don't even like each other that much. We just kind of just assumed that it would all turn out because there was sexual chemistry. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we never actually asked each other, what, what do you want? What are right. your values? Right. So that's why I think it's so important to ask that question first. But when it comes to like why people think it's so hard to get into a love relationship and as it is instead of like financial success, if I'm hearing the question yeah. correctly, mm -hmm. right? Which is because we unconsciously want love. Like at the end of the day, everybody is love, right? This is what we all want. This is what everything is made of, right? If you, in a spiritual way, that's what I think it is, right? But we think that we need to do something to get love. This is a conditioning from I childhood. It's like, it. well, if we don't get the A, right? No love from mom mm -hmm. and dad. It's the same subconscious conditioning that people are falling into it as a trap. They don't even realize that's what's happening. That's, that's really the core of what that is. These are blind spots, right? Mm -hmm. That our clients go through all the yeah. time. And so really what it comes down to is like, you, you are thinking that you're, you're after an emotion. So you're after this feeling inside that being in a relationship with someone is going to give you, but you don't realize that you already have that emotion, that state of being inside of yourself. Yeah. You think, so I always say you didn't get your heart broken. You got your expectations of how that relationship was supposed to turn out broken. And that experience was meant for you to come closer to your own heart and to your own true purpose. And then naturally just become a vibrational match for your, tr your true soulmate, right. or your true twin flame. That's the most Did that answer part. your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I wanted to hear that. That's the most important part is, is what you're saying is operating on a higher level, a higher frequency so that you can be that vibrational match. 
I think that people have the misconception that they are in control of their career, but not their love life. And if you look from a, um, your thoughts, emotions, your beliefs and behaviors, when people come into the spicy life, I can tell where they prioritize love based on what they do on a day-to-day basis. I can just hear what you do with your day and I know what's more important to you. So guess what? So does the universe. So they're going to give you, of course, more of the things that you invest your time and energy to. And so if you care more about your career, you're going to have more success in there. If you work on self and self-love, you will have more success when it comes to relationships because what you're saying is absolutely true. It is the, it's the internal, it's what energy you are giving out. Are you a vibrational match for what you are trying to attract? And then we could have a whole nother conversation about law of vibration and law of attraction, which you, and I know you and I both love that. Um, so <laughs> Theo and I will have you on this like podcast all day long, um, talking about energy and the energy work. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting because when you look at these kinds of this human magnet syndrome of like the, it's not codependent. I, I call it's called Ross Rosenberg calls it. He's a great author. He calls it self love deficiency, mm-hmm. and then the narcissism. So what happens with this is like it's a push pull. It's 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 a certain way that you, you got your mind, your subconscious was conditioned with this familiarity with hot and cold yep. so it's like oh i can't get too close to them because i could get hurt because maybe your mom punished you and so you, since she was your main source of love as a child which yeah. you're dependent on you don't you create this belief like i don't know if i can trust the person who's loving me so i don't i don't feel comfortable falling in love with someone yeah you become an and then, but i don't want to be abandoned so now i have to be a people pleaser and make sure nobody can reject me, right? Yeah. How can I manipulate other people to not reject me they don't instead of actually being it. myself? Right? Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. It. Or they'll even, or some people they have, uh, you know, emotional neglect where their parents were physically there, but their parents were horrible at uh, or asking, being vulnerable with their emotions. And so these people, they have a difficult time at articulating their emotions. And so this is, these are deeper things that in order to, because people are chasing success but their subconscious is bringing them back to what's familiar. You see that? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to what you're talking about, about the whole, oh, I don't know where I'm going. Like, I don't know how, why am I keep attracting this type of energy? Well, like you said, it's like the vibration that you're constantly in is driven through this unconscious conditioning, which is making yourself compare yourself to other people. Yeah. And you compare yourself to other people, you're putting yourself in lack because what you're, what you're doing is you're putting what you want on a pedestal of importance. So there's no way that you're going to get that thing because it's so important to you. And so the universe says, okay, well, if they think it's so important to to her or to him and her, then let me just give her more proof that she still lacks that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Right, because that's what you're doing when you say, "Oh, I need this money," or "I need you're this coming relationship." From a deficit right? mindset. Like, yeah, you're basically saying, "I don't have this. I don't have this." So the universe has to say, "Okay, here you go. Here you go." Right. So the only thing stopping people from getting what they want is their self-image and their limiting beliefs, their fear of rejection and judgment, and just lacking skills of communication. It really is skills. I think that we don't credit mm-hmm. skills enough too. like we can talk about beliefs we can talk about energy we can talk about our thoughts all day long but at the end of the day i can tell you what to think i can tell you what to feel i can even tell you what to believe but if you don't have the skills from a behavioral and action standpoint of what to mm. say how to communicate that how to know your audience and tailor your message how to speak to a man versus speaking to a woman what kind of um, energy mm. you should be putting forward what kind of behavior you should be doing in front of the audience that you're trying to attract you won't get the mate because you don't know what to do. And it's that behavioral piece. When I say that somebody tells me they want love and I'm like, well, how are you behaving in a way that's going to manifest this? And that's really what alignment is at the end of the day. We can think, pray, wish, hope on a shooting star. But if our behaviors aren't in alignment with what we truly believe we are worthy of and what we desire, and let me not use the word desire from a deficit standpoint, but what we feel like is what our goal is, right? If it's a relationship goal that we have, 
or the goal of partnership? Are you behaving in the way that is in alignment with your partner who you are asking for to meet you, to be attracted to you? And that's where the, that's when we speak to vibration. It's you becoming more magnetic. You need to be a magnetic field, a magnetic a vibrational match for what it is that you are trying to attract. So I, I, I'm here with you. I am like, you are my frequency. Yeah, this, yeah, this is why, this is why they call it Mari. This is why they call it the law of attraction. Cause yes. they're, they're, literally the word action is inside of the word attraction. Ooh. It's AT attra- action. So people think, Oh, it's, it's thinking, believing, manifesting. No, no. Whoever tells you that has no clue what they're talking about. It's law of attraction. You have to take right action and right. you have to learn this. It's a skill set. It's like, First, the step is, is getting rid of the head trash, right? Yep. That you're not even aware that you have, right? Getting, hire somebody. It's not just hire somebody, right? That's all right. I can say. This is just, get someone <laughs> to help you, right? You, you can't, that's what I wish I told, I, I just, you, you don't have to do everything on, on yourself. Like I used to be so tough through my whole life. I thought I was like the lone ranger, right? Do everything by myself. Mm-hmm. And it only got me to burn out. So I don't want that to happen to anyone. And I know Mari doesn't, you don't want that to happen to anyone. Absolutely That's why we not. do what we do. You yeah. know? So we dig the soil deep enough by getting rid of that head trash. So this plant the seed, and then you need the sunshine and the rain of the skill set of knowing how to take right action, right? Because people are usually taking action from this desperate feeling. Yeah. And that desperation is a clue into your subconscious conditioning. Oh my really, God. Really, Absolutely. And I think too, you tapped on a few words earlier that I want to address when it comes to even with love, you can be independent all day long, but then there's independent versus self-sufficient. And what self-sufficient is, is you being competent in that thing that you want, that you desire, that you are going after and capable and competent of acquiring it. So it's one thing to want love it's another thing to know how to get it are you competent in achieving what you want and you can be independent great you can be by yourself and be able to live your life in solitude or you can be self-sufficient and actually know how to get the relationship that you want so i use the analogy of it's one thing to be able to walk to the store it's another thing to be able to go to the store and have a grocery list and be able to actually come home with everything that you wanted when you were there and what you actually needed right Cause some people will come in with like, okay, well I want this, but then we actually find out, well, this is what you need. So <laughs> let's make sure we get all your, your, your nutrients first before we buy all this candy. But that's where, uh, yeah. that's where the self-sufficiency comes in. And we, it, it sounds like you are on the same page with me too, as far as like helping in the transformation process and training people to be able to rely on themselves, to bet on themselves, right? Themselves is the best investment that they will ever make. And you too are like somebody who has done that. So we can actually speak to testimony. Like we both have been in a place of investment in self, investment in self, which is why we were able to attract what we wanted. Because if we're not going to invest on this and we're not going to bet on this and we want somebody else to, uh -uh, that ain't going to happen. Yeah. I think people identify with the money in their bank account and that's why they never take a risk. That's why they never bet on themselves. But if life is, life is a game, right? It's an epic game. And so if we don't take risks, we're never going to get any results that are worthwhile. You know, think about emotions, right? Emotions drive the universe, right? It's so powerful, right? They can even influence our own rational thinking, Yeah. right? So think about it this way. Think about like the emotions that you, someone like you and I would get when we have to, we have to let go of an employee, Right. We're just like, oh, yeah. man, this just sucks because this is impacting their family, right? And that's, that can hurt, that can impact our emotions in a big way. But even think about somebody who works at McDonald's and they spill the grease and they're like, oh my God, right? Mm-hmm. They're like, oh my God, my life, I could get fired, yeah. right? So what I'm trying to show, show, show people in general uh, when I do my you know, speaking engagements is like, there's the amount of <laughs> the amount of emotional like pain quote unquote as a like a six seven figure business owner is the same emotion that you get working at McDonald's. It's just you get higher quality problems, 
Ooh, that's so like a the better problem saying, to have. <laughs> it's like you. It's like the old saying. You rather you know, would you rather cry in a Maz- in a in a in a Lamborghini or would you rather cry like on the back of a bus? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's kind of like a pompous thing to say, but it's it's true. It's like the the same emotions problem that you get on a high level is the same emotions that you get on a lower level. So meaning, right? Like the, the smallest little like issues like affect so many people, you know what I mean? Like who are in that lower state of scarcity. Yes. If they're in a low vibration too, their emotional management isn't going to be able to self-regulate so much. Um, Their emotions are going to start to dictate and control their behavior and how they respond to certain situations that throws them off. Right. So somebody else maybe who, if I, you know, brought on the show, the light goes out and they're sent into a, you know, a whirlwind or like you said, the McDonald's guy, you know, he spills some grease, but it's having the self-awareness to know, you know, in these situations, this is how I handle this. And I'm aware of this emotion and this trigger. I'm going to choose a different emotion, a different behavior and respond to this differently so that other people aren't one energetically affected. And I also don't create a domino effect of negative responses from this particular behavior. It's about the recovery. It really is. Yes. Yeah. It's like, it's like one guy in the McDonald's, like when he gets angry, he wants to drag the whole team down. Right. (laughs) right? Whereas like someone like you and I get angry, it's like we're, uh, we can manage our emotions so that even though we're, it's not, it's not an appropriate context to lash out. Right. right. So we're gonna be have the ability to like bypass our emotions. It's not that we're stuffing our emotions, guys, but we're we're emotionally intelligent enough to deal with it at another time. Yeah. Right. To go to the gym later at work to get it out to blow off some steam. Right. In a healthy way. Yeah. Right. So that just goes to show you. It's like you have to understand how relationships work and how much of an impact that you have on other people to really be able to grow into these higher levels of consciousness where you, you take away the illusion that we're separate, right? Like we're all one. Yeah. So once you understand that, then you stop, then you actually can stop blaming the government. You can stop blaming (laughs) the weather. You can stop blaming the economy, right? Because if you truly understand your mind, if you can learn this stuff, nothing in the economic environment, can, can hurt you because right now what's happening is there's a huge opportunity for people to create the meaning in their life Yeah, and to choose that and choose it regardless it. of what people think about the time. Like how are people perceiving this time right now? Is it their time to focus on self, focus on their career, focus on their business growth, or are they going to do nothing during this time this is an opportunity but it's them seeing it as an opportunity versus as seeing it as a setback yeah it's a set up. I mean, the, yeah the government's saying go inside but it doesn't just mean go inside your house it's like literally go inside yourself right go go to your room go inside go in, okay go inside yourself and find out like wh- what am i going to do because right now the iron is so hot for the right people yeah right for the right leaders and you look at any company that's huge today, they were all started in 2009, in 2000, you know, 1978, whatever, whenever, whenever that other great recession was. Yeah. So these are people who looked for the opportunity and realized that this opportunity may never come again, right? It may never come again. But we, a lot of people, they're so scared that they just want to sit on their hands and wait for the environment to change. Well, I say, how about you, you become the change? There's a great quote by Osho. He says, when you look around and you see all the darkness around you, perhaps you're the light. And I think that's so true. Yeah, beautiful. But you truly yes. have to believe that. Are you seeing one... a, a, bi- a boom in business right now during uh, quarantine? I am. I am seeing a boom in business because it's the same way how like there's a lot of people in real estate who – understand like debt and taxes. I don't know. I don't want to get too technical, but 
they understood how debt and taxes can be leveraged to create success in real estate. And these are the yeah. people who like actually made a whole lot of money in the recession in real estate. But it's the same way here where it's like, people are starting to realize that you gotta skill up. Right? You gotta skill up because the world's going online whether or not you like it. Oh my you, can go, you can say all day long, I refuse technology, but I would say technology is just an extension of human consciousness. It's just an extension of our intelligence. If you could hear my clients when they're like, well, I don't wanna go online and date, and I don't wanna do that, I'm like, okay, so what right? are you putting in its place? If you're not online dating and you're not on the apps, what, how are you overcompensating for that? Oh, you're not going out and talking to people you say? So then what are we doing? Like, it, I use the analogy of like, are you buying your, are you paying for your bills in person still? Are you mailing, like actually going to the post office? Like, how are you um, ordering your food? Oh, everything's on Amazon, mm -hmm. you say? You're ordering everything online now? It's the same thing when it comes to relationships and dating. Although I still want people to have, you know, the interpersonal skills and be able to meet people you still have to be realistic when it comes to there's so many tools in front of us that people want to reject and not acknowledge or use, but it's using those tools successfully that makes the difference. And so it sounds like you're in the same arena right now. And I too, am doing like the spicy life is doing great because people are taking this time to do some self-reflection. They've had to go inside, uh, inside their mind, inside their hearts and really look at, okay, when this does in, am I gonna, when this is over, am I going to be prepared? for the relationship that I want. And if the answer is no, what's the work that we're gonna do now? Because you can find love right now during COVID. You can find a career and your purpose and walk in that right now during COVID. What are you going to do right now to contribute to that? Because if not, your life is gonna be exactly the same before it began or maybe even worse. Exactly, maybe even worse. <laughs> you know, it's, it's so funny because like, something like this had to happen where people start to wake up and they say, oh my gosh, wow, the world's waking up. And I'm like, no, but don't, don't just say the world's waking up. It doesn't, it doesn't mean like you get to wait for the whole world to wake up before right. you wake up, right? <laughs> it's like, no, here's the thing. It's like a lot of, some of my clients, like they're in this wounded energy and they're still kind of uh. very flaky and very indecisive. And because the most successful people are decisive, because they see that time is more important than money, right? Because if you have more time, you can create mm -hmm. more ideas, you can yep. create systems. But if you can't make a decision, you can't say yes or no, you just have so much stuff going on in your head yeah. that you don't even know what to do. So when you look at like what's happening now, people are starting to realize that actually, you know what, if you fix the right problems, then you realize, oh, you could have been living the dream life you wanted Two years, five years ago, right? <laughs> Last year, right? You, it's already available to you. Like we said earlier, right? Like everything is energy. Yep. So if the reality that you want, like it's already in the atmosphere, right? Like it's already just available to you. Just you just got it. You're like Neo in the matrix. You yes. chose the challenges in your life. Mm -hmm. You chose these guides to come in, to whisper in your ear and say like, hey, like this is the next signpost. Right? It doesn't mean you pay for a program and then you get to sit and back and do nothing. No, just be, if you pay $50,000 for a program, if you don't commit, right, <laughs> nothing's going to happen. So it really just is about how much are you willing to commit to yourself. The money is just to make sure that you have skin in the game, right? To make, because so otherwise it's just an investment of focus. It's, mm -hmm. an, it's an investment of energy that you're doing that. Like if you go to a, a seminar by Tony Robbins and you pay five dollars you're gonna go and enjoy yourself but you're probably gonna forget everything within 48 hours but if you paid like a thousand for that seminar <laughs> you're taking you'd notes. be taking notes you'd be <laughs> recording it you'd be asking questions you'd be sucking the juice out of that seminar so it's the same investment of energy of focus holding yourself accountable to make sure that you get results put a fire under your butt because humans are conditioned to delude ourselves. We're so good at deluding oh ourselves. My God. That's why I have my own coaches. That's why you have your own coaches to see where we're like, <laughs> we're, we're deceiving ourselves, right? Like we're oh just my saying, God. Oh, I love, when, I love when my coaches tell me like, you know, you're tripping. Like they literally will say, not nah, up, uh, up. Uh, you need to apply this in like, and the thing is, is that sometimes we do know some of the things that we're doing. We just need help with it or the push, even from a behavioral standpoint of what mm. to change. Right. 
So I, we too have accountability partners, you guys, who push us and make us to do better, who help us in areas of our life to grow. Um, I have one last uh, question for you while you're in this little hot seat of mine, and that's the naked truth. If you could travel back in time, 10 years ago, Theo, mm -hmm. where would you travel to, when and why? And what lesson oh, would you question. tell yourself? What would I tell myself? Yeah, what conversation would you have with yourself? Tell us the when, the where, the why. I would say, I would say two main things. And the first thing is, you know, it's not your fault, but it's your responsibility to change. It's not your fault, right? But it happened for you. It mm -hmm. didn't happen to you. However, that's not an excuse. You have to take responsibility and save yourself. <laughs> no one's going to save you. I know that sounds like really harsh, but I wish someone would say that because it says no one's going to save you. You're going to save you. But guess what? I believe in you, right? Because we only need one person to believe in us. It doesn't yeah. matter if it's just your grandma, right? But sometimes when we're in this darker space, right? Like, um, we just need one person to say, Hey, I believe in you. Yeah. And, and that's, that's why I love what I do because I'm sometimes I'm the one person that is really truly believed in uh, my clients. Right. And then the second thing I would say is trust. Right. Not, I would say, you know, trust, meaning trust the process, mm -hmm. but don't let that be an excuse to, to just procrastinate. Right. right. So there is an element of, yes, the universe works on its own divine timing, right? When it comes to manifestation, but you still got to take action. You still got to be in alignment with action. it. <laughs> yeah, because the universe doesn't give us what we want. It gives us who we are being on a moment to moment basis. Mm -hmm. And it's just reflecting back that to us. So when you look at the grand scheme of that collective consciousness, as we see it on the planet, so many people are living inauthentic lives. Mm -hmm. So in a spiritual way, like I truly believe we co-created the coronavirus because of nature, mother nature. She's like, well, you know, I'm going to just give you this gift so that you can be forced to become who you truly are. Right. Right. Cause there's people who are probably reaching out to us that may not have had this not happened. Had people not been forced to be still and acknowledge and sit with self. Mm. Right. Cause that's when Huge. some of that darkness comes to the light is like, wow, so do I really love myself? Because I'm with myself like no other time before. We don't have the distractions of all these other people, of the events, of even going into like the office space or, you know, our favorite activities and hobbies right now to be able to do. We only have self. And if we're not absolutely in love with self and what we have to offer the world and using our tools and our gifts, you know, to serve the universe, like, are we truly, really happy? And pe I think people yes. are starting to see that, like, let me get this dose of happiness really quick. Like, let me start to work on self. Yes, that's, that's exactly like what an addiction is. It's, it's, it's actually a way for you to get back into the present moment. Mm -hmm. And so like we, we have this false belief that when I get something, then I can be happy. But I, I would say choose to be happy now because every decision you make is to be happy. Yeah. So that's the first stepping stone is to, is to get present to the moment. And so people, it's so easy to, to fall into an addiction, to rely on addiction, yeah. to easy to blame other people. It's, that's what everyone does. So when people do this work, they should be really proud of themselves, like a huge pat on the back yeah. for investing into you because that's the most powerful investment you can make. Absolutely. And you're doing stuff, the deep, dark work that most people are too driven by their egos to not do. Yeah, and absolutely. Th that's okay. This this journey uh, towards self discovery and self actualization is not for everybody, right? It's some people they they are not in the timeline. Let's just say mm -hmm. of being a open to that idea, yeah. right? Yeah. Like some people just are not on that timeline. Some people just aren't on that, and that's okay. But if anyone out there is listening to this, if 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 you take away the illusion that we're separate again, right? Like don't look at Mari and I like we're your parents because then you're not going to take action. You're either going to think we're your parents and then you're just going to ignore us. 
So if you think, if your heart is resonating with what we're talking about today, just think of it like you're giving yourself advice through us because mm -hmm. we're just communicating through to you from, to your highest state of being. Oh, yeah. not in, we're, not, we're not like gods, guys. We're not better than you, but we're just, we're just at a space where we just want to help others because we're fortunate and we just want to help other people. We want to give back. Right. Well, we're we want to be a energy. resource to you guys. We're atoms of energy. Yeah. And so yeah, and there's something nothing from a you... vibration pulled you to us to hear this episode. Something. Yeah. Something there's no coincidences. You. There's yeah. no coincidences in the universe. Nothing happens by accident. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's something, there's a reason why you're listening to this right now. So it, in, in everyone is going to resonate with a different coach, right? Like, Somebody who's going to work with me might not necessarily vibe well with Mari. Someone who works with Absolutely. Mari might not necessarily vibe with me. So it's about how do you find that vibrational energy match? Because if you're going to want to be a coach, if you want to be a consultant or some kind of online expert, like you want to pick a coach who's going to reflect the same energy as your potential clients, mm -hmm. right? Like you want a coach who's committed, who who's takes action, who does the work on themselves, right? Who, who walks their talk, who walks their brand. Yeah. Right? So you want someone who to, to um, commit, you want someone who's decisive, you want someone who's vulnerable with you as a client. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And I love what you do, Theo, because you work with clients, but you also work with turning them into coaches. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, and I focus purely on like clients and like matchmaking, like helping them become more magnetic. But what I like is just when I hear you speak to their quality of life and being, mm. you know, purposeful, that lets me know that someone else out there is helping me help people find their purpose mates, right? Because if there's a pool of people mm. and you're helping them and leading them, you know, to water and even helping, you know, you can't get them to drink, but with the coach, it becomes a lot easier. They start sipping mm -hmm. a lot more. Now I know that there's this pool of people that are existing in the world for me to be, be able to help to meet one of my clients who is ready for her purpose mate. Right. And now that there's an, an energetic match, now there is a frequency that you have helped people put in alignment with walking in their purpose that prepares my clients for them. I'm going to be probably reaching out to you. Like, so do you have a guy who is uh, walking in his purpose and I need him to be, you know, Oh me. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I I'm going to be reaching out to you to um, send me your clients so that I can set them up uh, in matchmaking with mine. <laughs> Cause I do the yeah. actual like physically matching part and I want to match you as well. You're single. And so, um, anytime I have a single stud or, um, stud at uh, a beautiful woman or a beautiful man on the show with and by beauty, I mean their energy. Um, yeah. uh, although you are internal and external, um, I, it's more about, you know, the energy that you give. I like to let everybody know, so that that way, if they want to email me or they want to reach out to you, I am, I am in the business of love. So any way that I can spread it, you know, you talk about addictions, I'm addicted to love. So <laughs> yeah, that's a great, addiction. it's, it's one that, that actually is a, is a fantastic addiction, right? <laughs> it's, if you're going to be addicted to anything, be addicted to love. Um, well, ironically, <laughs> that's actually what people are trying to get through an addiction. <laughs> right. Why not just so, cut out the middleman, right? <laughs> Yes. Let's just make it good. Let's just make it good for you. Um, but I would love to uh, set you up. So I'm going to be reaching out to you. And if you guys want to reach out to Theo, uh, please let everybody know where they can find you, whether they are physically attracted to you, energetically or for business, mm -hmm. though. Let's I'll keep it professional for first. Uh, business wise, where can they find you? Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, if anyone's looking for clarity on their challenges in life and they're not quite sure like what's the next step or they're getting overwhelmed with how do I do this why do I make a plan no how about my, what I would say to you is just start where your shoes are right start where your feet are and take the next if you see like your vision and you have a vision of where you want to go hold that vision because that's what matters but don't look on the other side of the river there's so many stones to get to the other side. Mm -hmm. So just focus on the next rock to jump to. That's all you got to focus on because what got me to success, even though I have tons of strategies, Mari had tons of strategies yeah. and game plans for you, right? To customize for you. Like what got us to where we are is not necessarily what got 
is going to get you to success. Yeah, Just customized. like 50 Cent, like he got shot nine times to become a famous rapper. <laughs> but that doesn't mean you're going to have to get shot t- nine times, right, to become a f- famous rapper. So oh my God. go to my website. Go to, go to my website. I have a free cl- clarity worksheet where it helps you to clarify what your fears are and what's going to inspire you to take action now, right? What's going to help you to manifest your, your dream life in business? Um, go to www.theocummings.com. It's my name. So T as in Tiger, H as in Henry, E as in Edgar, O as in Oscar, C as in Cat, U as in Umbrella, M as in Michael, M as in Michael, I as in Ingrid, N as in Nancy, G as in Gary, S as in Stephen.com. That was a long-winded answer, Whoa. but yeah, <laughs> theocummings.com. You just go, you can read a lot more about my own personal story and my, my clients' results on that. And you can connect with me on all of my social media platforms. Facebook is where I'm the most active, but I also have LinkedIn and Instagram as well at master.vibrant. Master master.vibrant. I know that's a strange name. We're just trying <laughs> out a new brand. Master Vibrant, right? It's just like something that my clients kept talking about me. And I was like, oh, that's an interesting nickname vibrant like you think i'm vibrant so that's what we just went for as a fun thing on instagram but yeah connect with me on social media feel free to you know set up a breakthrough chat if you really resonate with what we were talking about today if you're looking for a new breakthrough um, i always like to i don't never say anything that i can definitely help anyone like i don't know if i can help everyone but i have helped many people in all the different phases of their business so if you're looking to scale to you know, multiple six figures, or you're just starting out, you have no clue what to do. Like just reach out to me and I can see if I can help you. We'll customize a game plan for you. And then if it's a good fit, we'll execute the plan together. I love it, Theo. I love it. And you guys, please, yes, hit him up. Um, He's creating purposeful people out there. And I'm telling you, we might, I might even try to set you up with some of his clients. (laughs) I can't help myself. I can't help myself. Or I might try to set you up with you. Uh, And you guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my Instagram at Spicy Mati. You can go to the spicylife.com. Make sure that you click and subscribe this episode. Share it with a friend, a loved one, someone who needs to be filled up right now with this energy. And we are putting it out there, making Mm. sure that you guys feel it. You love it. We want to spread the love to you. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The Spicy Life.